Hello again. Welcome to the final week, week eight of the Flex course. And uh, thank you so much for hanging with me and going through all of this material. And like I said at the beginning of the course, you've got all of this material now. It's there and there's definitely no need to feel like you have to pressure yourself into playing all of this stuff that's in here already. You know, there's enough material in the, these eight weeks to, to practice for years. Once you start to unlock and understand the rudiments and how they can be used and, and understand how grooves and fills uh, and rudiments being the, the tools of putting all these things together, how they all relate, and the bigger picture of what playing the drums is all about. It's all of these elements combining to create groove, beats, fills, accents, movement, uh, creativity, interesting sounds, and then the, the aspect of, of also solid, consistent timekeeping, which is going to make you more desirable to play with uh, from the perspective of other musicians. If you're in school band or if you want to one day maybe form your own band with friends, developing that really good, strong sense of, of timekeeping right here in your chest from practicing with a, with a click track, working hard on the, your technique so you can execute strokes well. All these things combine to make up a, a good drummer. When the aspect of feel when you play a groove. How, understanding the sound elements of the drums. The, the strong bass drum and a strong snare backbeat creating a really good groove. Boom, ga, boom, ga, boom, ga. You know, all, all these things combine to paint the big picture about being a good drummer. At first, I, I, I totally understand that all this material laid out like this, some of it's very technical, a lot of it's written down, and it looks intimidating and and we've broken all that down over the course of the eight weeks so some of that has been demystified which is great but it's still it can be intimidating because of the the sheer amount of information but it's important to step up above that and just look at the whole thing as the big picture of what playing the drums is all about and you don't have to master every single thing at the same time. And you don't have to master every single thing at all anyway. You know, you, you might end up liking a type of music that, that really doesn't incorporate a lot of 16th notes or big fills or flashy solos or whatever. But maybe it's just really good slamming heavy grooves or playing really fast like punk rock grooves or maybe it's just playing nice and mellow stuff like there it's all about giving yourself the tools that so that you can choose what it is that you like about drumming and 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 then apply that into what you like about music in general and what type of music you enjoy so it's just like speaking a language. The more words that you know, the, the more effectively, the better you can talk and communicate clearly to other people. So playing the drums is the same. The more understanding that you have of rudiments and how your hands work together and how beats are constructed, how rhythm theory works, how reading the notes uh, on paper works, it all adds into your ability to then communicate and play music well. So that's what this last week is kind of focusing on is com combining these elements, having some fun with how we can put these things together so that you don't see them just as a bunch of separate things. Like when I play the paradiddle exercise, I play the paradiddle this way because there are infinite ways you can play a paradiddle you know within any kind of setting so we're going to talk about this in this in this final week about how we can combine these things so that you can start to just use them see them 
as just a part of the whole, the whole picture. So essential combined elements. And these, first thing is we're gonna do an extended warm up exercise using a bunch of the stuff that we did with the rudiments. So the first one, three part warm up using single, double, and paradiddle strokes. And that's gonna be good. Second one is to combine the five and seven stroke roll. And that brings up some interesting accenting uh, possibilities. And it's also really nice and challenging for your hand control to play that five and seven stroke roll together. We're gonna move them around, practice them within grooves. And the final thing we're gonna talk about is how to open and close the hi-hat. That's something that we haven't talked about yet and it can get overlooked a lot when you start playing the drums. You've got this hi-hat pedal, you know there's two cymbals there, and there's a lot you can do with that. But it's important that you can get a good start, uh, hab a, a good habit started, how you execute that pedal. Because if you're, you know, if you're unsure about it and you don't know, it'll maybe sound sloppy or it just won't work. So we're gonna look at that. So here we've just got this little kind of finishing off the course thing. Yeah, you want to internalize these concepts, experiment and have fun by making up your own combinations. And that's kind of what this is about here at the end of this is, is to start to combine some of these things. But you have this material now so you can always go back and refer to it. Go back and refer over all the different things you've you've learned and experiment with it. Put them together and come up with the combinations. What does it feel like if I do a paradiddle diddle this way and then I play two paradiddles and then I play some single strokes this way? Whatever, all of it is fun and you can make up all kinds of things that way. There's a list down here of some essential listening that I've recommended. And most of this is all kind of classic rock from, from way, way back, you know, back in the 70s and 80s. and a lot of these are really awesome drummers that illustrate a lot of the type of stuff that we've been going over in the course. And I'm just hoping that maybe you'll check some of these out, listen to some of these songs, and see where that takes you. Because all of the inspiration and uh, the information about music and playing the drums is it's out there and it's, it's in the music. You know, great musicians have come and gone, thousands and thousands and thousands of them, and they've left behind this amazing history of their talent, and, and, and that can inspire us, you know, to, to uh, find our own voice in that. So hopefully you'll check that out. Have a look at that list, and go and listen to some of those songs. There's some great drumming on there. Okay, so let's jump into it. We're going to go with the essential combined elements first. And we're starting off with the extended warm up. Once you get this uh, warm up comfortable, this is a great way to just start off your practice sessions. Sit down, make sure you're, you know, seated nice, straight back, relaxed, feet on the pedals and play through this warm up cycle. So we start with single strokes, measure of eighth notes, measure of sixteenth notes. Same with each other one here, doubles, measure of eighth notes, measure of sixteenth notes. Paradiddles, eighth notes and sixteenth notes. Bass drum on all the quarter notes, right? So it's simple, there it is. Repeat that around and around. So this is what you'll end up with. 8th to 16th notes in each of the three hand patterns, okay? One, two, three, four, singles.
and just repeat that around and around. Let your hands get nice and relaxed. As you're getting comfortable with it, shift the tempo. Try to push yourself up a little bit, up and back down, up and back down. Or you could start it real fast and see if you can do it. Challenge yourself, right? Take it up a little bit like this. Expand that out by adding the hi-hat foot. You can do it as the walking pattern. One and two and single stroke. Double stroke. walking pattern going with all the rudiments we've done you can you can use that technique you can play both feet together this is something we haven't talked about yet but this is also a good thing to practice both feet playing at the same time one two three four single strokes double strokes Like that you can just use the left foot if you want to practice that left foot you can only use it you can do that on every 16th note if you wanted to you could train this left foot up so you'd play one e and a two e and a oh hold on a second That's how you do it. So you play this as eighth notes. One and two and three and four and Lots of ways you can do that. You can you can add the feet in and uh, train those legs up. Get get the stamina in. You know, get the consistency of pulse going in your feet as well. Get comfortable with placing your hands over top of either foot, both together, walking one at a time. Lots of different variations you can use there. And that works too with moving around the kit with them too, right? Like it, it's fun to just uh, practice playing around the drum set with your bass drum going or with both feet going. When I was younger, I used to just spend ages just doing that. I would just go like this and I would just play all kinds of stuff just around the drums just to, just to keep playing, just, just whatever, right? So you can do that. fun when you've got that boom 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 going underneath you it's almost like you've got a a guy who's just playing a bass drum for you to jam over top of 
your feet can do that for you and it helps you get that full body um, internalization of things going when you when you start to practice that way so that's a lot of fun practice that with all the rudiments we've worked on you know seven stroke roll five stroke roll all of it see if you can place those like that so let's see if I've missed anything there let's yeah let's combine five and seven stroke rolls now so we did the extended warm-up now we're going to put this five and seven stroke roll together and this is a this is a really cool one you remember that the five stroke roll goes one e and a two three e and a four and it goes back and forth between right hand starting and left hand starting so let's begin i'm just going to recap the five stroke roll just so that we get that right one. That's the five stroke roll. It flip flops your hands. And that's what makes this exercise interesting. Because the seven stroke roll does not flip flop. It just goes right, right, left, right, right, left, right, right, left, right, right, left. So when we take a half of a five stroke roll and then play a seven stroke roll, it turns into a thing that flip flops. So here you see that in the first line, right, right, left, left, right. That's the five stroke roll right there. It's the first half, right, right, left, left, right. And now instead of playing left, left, right, right, left, which would be the second half of the five stroke roll, we continue and play the last few strokes, which make it a seven stroke roll. So we have right, right, left, left, right, left left right right left left right ending here on number four one e and a two and a three e and a four and because that's the way it is with only using the first half of the five stroke roll the seven stroke roll finishes on a right which means that we have to start the next measure on the left and that's the five stroke roll there. So basically we've taken a regular five stroke roll and we've split it apart and we've stuck a seven stroke roll in the middle of it. And then that way we can flip it back and forth. So follow along on your sheet and I'm gonna play this. I'll start just with the hands. One and a two and a three and a four. Right. Put the bass drum in there. So that is how you can put those two together. I'm playing it only on the snare right now. So you can get a sense of the rhythm. It goes. It gets easier to hear when you add some toms or, or accents in to actually kind of get a better idea of how it's broken up. So. some fun little patterns that you can experiment with last line here of the seven and five stroke roll combination we're going to try putting in that walking pattern and we can do all the foot variations just like I showed you a minute ago 
you could use just the hi-hat foot, you can play eighth notes, you can play both feet together. Let's start with the walking rhythm. Let's try playing both feet together with that and do it as eighth note feet. One, and two, and three, and four, and That's the seven and five stroke roll put together to make a nice longer kind of melodic, really interesting rhythmic sounding exercise that you can move around the kit and play around with and create lots of cool sounding patterns with. So now we're going to take a look at how you can take the extended warm up that we did and move that around the drums too, bringing in some of the toms and creating some different sounds and movements so you can get used to playing repetitive strokes and moving them around smoothly. That's important. It's easy to overlook that. And then when it comes time to like try to play something like a fill, you can, you can feel like, well, I don't know any fills. I don't know what to do. And it can be intimidating. Well, doing exercises like this can help you start moving around the drums comfortably and those exercises can help you to kind of start to construct ideas that you can use as fills. So starting with single strokes, we're going the same, same thing, single stroke, double stroke, paradiddle. We're going from eighth notes to sixteenth notes in each one. We've got the quarter note bass drum. And now we just need to take a close look at where these strokes are happening. Snare, 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 snare. First tom, first tom, floor tom, floor tom. Snare, first tom, second tom, floor tom. So for that first line, remember I don't have a third tom or a second tom here on my kit. I just have the tom and the floor tom. So I'm going to play these last two on my floor tom. I'll go snare, first tom, floor tom, floor tom. But for you, you can use three toms if you have them. So let's start up with the bass drum. One, two, three, four. that one moving those single strokes around the drums double strokes on the second one now we have snare 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 first tom first tom first tom first tom snare tom second tom third tom so the reason we play it this way in the first measure is because we're using double strokes so I'll just illustrate why it's easier to play what's written here and why this is a good way of doing it. You have your, your, your first four strokes in the snare. One and two and three and four and. So because we're using right, right, left, left, it doesn't make any sense to put these two strokes on the first tom and these ones on the floor tom because you, you'd, you'd have to do this. You'd have to go one and two. And then reach under with your left hand, four and. Now that's really awkward and you're probably going to click your sticks together and drop your stick. And it's just not a practical way to move around the drums to go like that. It's really awkward. So instead we just put the four strokes up there on that first tom. And it works out perfect. So let's do this one. One. And four and one and four and ah, 
I messed it up. Let's try that again. That's how you can do those. And of course, you can make up your own patterns with all of this too. You can decide that you want to split up your double strokes between a couple of drums. You know, you can go like this. You can make up different combinations as you like. The more comfortable you get with the actual execution of the double strokes, start to experiment. Paradiddles. So we've got eighth note paradiddles, bass drum playing the quarter notes underneath, floor tom, snare, 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 first tom, snare, 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 and then the same down here, floor tom, snare, snare, high tom, snare, snare, snare. So that is a pattern that goes like this. Air, And that's kind of the tricky part is to get that second one left hand up here for the first stroke. Left, right, left, left. Okay, so let's go over that now with the bass drum underneath. One, two, three, four. That's a good paradiddle exercise. So let's put all three of those together now. I'm going to stop sharing. You can follow along on your sheet. And we're going to do the whole thing here. One, two, three, four. Singles. that extended warm-up integrating those toms. One little detail to pay uh, close attention to is this here. When you finish your double strokes right here you're going snare 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 tom 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 second tom floor tom floor tom floor tom floor tom and you're starting the paradiddle right there also on the floor tom that's that's one of the real tricky things because your instinct wants to take you back to the snare to start the next round to start the next hand pattern because that's what you're doing here you start on the snare you finish off on the floor tom you go back here and start the double strokes on the snare but when you finish those double strokes here you want to stay on that floor tom for the first paradiddle stroke so i'll just demonstrate that Starting from this point here, the last measure of the double strokes, the 16th notes. One, two, and a three, and a four, and a pair, a and a So you play these last four strokes, right, right, left, left, right, left, right, right. So you have to do that first paradiddle stroke on that floor. That's the one thing to really... Uh, pay close attention to because it's tricky okay and that's a great way of starting to
get comfortable with moving all around the drums, using those different combinations and helping your body get used to that. Final thing, we're going to take a look at um, opening and closing the hi-hat. So, we've got it written here. Now, just to make sure you're clear on what's going on here, the zero or the O means that you open it. So when you see that above a certain stroke, that's where you're going to open it. The plus sign means you close it again, and then it stays closed until you open it again here. Open, close. So when you see that, you know, okay, it's opening for the length of one eighth note, and it's closing right again on the next eighth note. And that's important because when you get into opening and closing the hi-hat, you can very easily start to sound sloppy. If you don't pay close attention to how you're manipulating this pedal and, and opening and closing these things. You, again, like I mentioned earlier on when we were talking about getting the chick sound, nice and crisp and tight sounding, you want to place the pressure at the front of your foot, your toes and the ball of your foot. That's where you want to be pressing down so that you close it really sharply and you don't get any residual sloppy, sloshy sounds when you're hitting it. So the first thing to practice is to just play slow eighth notes on this thing. One. And as you're doing that, keep some pretty good solid pressure on the pedal so that this stays really tightly shut. So you get a really short, crisp sound when you're hitting it. And then when you open it, there's going to be a big contrast. And the real important subtle thing about opening and closing the hi-hat to pay attention to is that you don't always want to just take your foot right up like this and and open these all the way up because there's a there's a sound difference that that happens if you let this open all the way you'll get this so it goes eh, you get a kind of a tingy sound but if you relax your foot and you only open it slightly you get this so you get that nicer thicker shushy sort of sound instead of so that's a subtle thing to to watch out for and we have to train this left foot to be able to only relax itself and lift up a certain slight amount to get that nice fat slushy sound that you want instead of just doing that and getting that tingy sound Sometimes you want the tingy sound, and then you can take your foot right off. But I'll give you an example. If I'm playing a simple groove, and I'm going to open this hi-hat a little bit, I'm going to slightly open it just so I get a nice sloosh sound. When I open it, it's only staying open for the length of one eighth note on the hi hat. I'm opening it exactly as I strike the cymbal, but I'm not opening it up all the way. I'm just opening it enough to get that nice sound that I like. And then I'm closing it on the next eighth note, and I'm hitting the cymbal exactly as I'm closing it, too. 
So my foot's doing an action kind of like this, where it's on the pedal, and it's going open, close, open, close. If, this is, if these are the tips of my toes, and this is my heel, I'm just relaxing this part and lifting it up slightly, keeping my heel on the, on the bottom plate of the pedal, open, close, like this. And I'm hitting it both times. I'm hitting it as I open, and I'm hitting it again as I close. So that's a good way to get started, is to play slow eighth notes here on your hi-hat. Choose one eighth note that you want to use to open it. So in this case, let's say we're going to play the very last eighth note, the and of four. That's going to be the one that we open, and then we're going to close it again on one. So we'll play it from the beginning. One, and, two, and, three, and, four, and one. Then you can increase the number of times. You could say, let's do it on the and of two and also on the and of four. One, and, two, and, three, and, four, and, one, and, two, and, close, and, four, and, close, and, two. And then you could double it up again. You could do it on every eighth note in between the quarter notes. So every and. So my foot is going Just like that, and my heel's not coming off the hi-hat pedal. It's just kind of rocking a little bit back and forth. Open, close, open, close. So that's a good way to start, and pay attention to the accuracy of opening, lifting up your foot exactly at the moment that you strike it, and then closing your foot exactly at, at the same moment as you hit it again. And you can make lots of great beats when you do that. It, it, you can make beats that specifically highlight the open hi-hat sound like this. just really subtly to bring out a slightly slushier, fatter sound in the hi-hat without opening and closing it. You can just relax your foot and check out the difference in the sound that you get from this. I'm going to start with it really tightly shut. So you get that nice kind of crisp, sharp hi-hat sound. But then I'm going to, I'm going to change the feel by relaxing my foot a bit. So there's just so much that that introduces into a groove. It can really increase the feel factor of a groove you're playing. You heard how I started to relax the hi-hat a little bit. So that, that real crisp articulation started to...
soften up and become rounder, a little bit, you know, chunkier. And that, that can be very effective. You, know, you could use it even just a tiny little hints of accent. And you see how I'm kind of doing it in all kinds of different places. You can place it anywhere. So, again, start slow and simple, like I demonstrated in the beginning. Just hi-hat. And get, get clean and comfortable with that. And then what we can do is work on a little bit of a groove here. Let's just talk about this. So here we've got the hi-hat opening on the end of beat one. Bass, open hi-hat, and then snare where it closes again. So that would sound like this. I'm just going to play these first three hits. One. One. And then we've got one, one, and two, and three, and four, okay? So you're closing that hi-hat exactly as you hit the hi-hat and snare together. This version, we've got it coming on the end of two. So you're opening it right after you hit the snare, and you're closing it exactly as you hit the bass and hi-hat on number three. Let's try that bar. One. I'm going to play both measures together now a few times so you can hear how that sounds. One, two, three, four. Next line, we've got some more opening and closing coming right after each other here. One, and two, and three. Four. And we've got two bass drums happening here in the beginning, too. So follow along on your sheet. I'm going to close this so you can look a little bit closer up here. So two bass drums now. So your beat pattern is this. One and two and three. Four. Our hi-hat's going... So let's put that all together. Here we go. One, two, and three, and four, and So that's how that sounds. And one of the tricky things about that, and it's what's good to practice, is that first open hi-hat on the end of one, which is played together with the bass drum. So that is a challenging coordination thing at first to get used to, because it means that you're hitting this hi-hat exactly as you hit the bass drum, and you're opening the hi-hat exactly as you're hitting the bass drum. So what that means is that your bass drum foot, if this is your bass drum foot here, and this is your hi-hat foot, your bass drum foot's going boom, and at that exact moment, your hi-hat foot's going up. So you've got boom. So one, 
and two. One and two. Your feet have to work opposite. That second bass drum hit goes down, and the hi hat one goes up. Bzz, bop. So that is some tricky coordination at first. So again, you can always just look at that one individual thing, hone in right on these two eighth notes here, and practice th those two. Practice going just like this. So your bass drum and right hand are coming down, and at that moment you hit the cymbal there, your left foot's going like that. Or it's actually, and then you're finishing strong with that snare. So your hi hat foot's going up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. And you can just practice that over and over again until you get that foot coordination together. Uh, 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 uh. Bass drum over here goes down. The hi-hat foot goes up at the same time. Mm. So that is, that's a tricky one there. But, like it says here on the sheet, play each of these measures individually round and round and round and round. Get comfortable with them. Once you've done that, experiment with playing that open and closed hi-hat on any of these eighth notes. All of them. Go through it systematically and say, I'm going to open the hi-hat on the first eighth note. One, two, and three, and four, and one. Then do the second eighth note. One, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two. Then do the two. Then do the and of two, etc. You can go through each one like that. And pr practice putting that eighth note open hi-hat in there. And do that with all the other beats we've gone through. You can refer back through the course. Look at the different uh, variation beats we've done. And... Practice them with open and closing hi-hats in different spaces. Uh, that brings a whole new range of things to uh, put together when you do that. So we are done with the course. Thank you so much for coming and, uh, and doing this flex course. I hope you've had fun and challenged yourself and learned a lot. I know there's a lot of material here, and I hope that you'll just keep on slowly but surely working through it and and seeing more and more what you can do with all the information that's in here, ways that you can um, twist it and turn it and make it your own, find combinations and approaches that you like and that, that uh, you feel good playing and that combinations that bring about ideas and creativity. That's the main thrust, I think, of, of presenting all this information is to, to let you know that there are no strict rules about having to play any of this stuff in this particular way. These are just ways that I have chosen to put them together to illustrate certain things. But you know how quarter notes, eighth notes, sixteenth notes, and triplets work theoretically. So you can have a ball and organize them in any way that you like. Try different things and be, be super creative and have fun. All right, and good luck with the rest of your drumming and everything else. Thank you. Bye-bye.